We talk about unlocking the hidden value of IPv4. So IP address is essential asset for the internet. It's a service enabler. So which means any devices and uh, any cloud servers or anything stay online needs an IPv4 addresses. No IPv4, no internet. And yet it is massive on the value today. So today I'm going to talk about one thing and one thing only, which is how to unlock its hidden value. So the current value of IPv4 is about 30 cents per month per IP. My company leads in at this rate. For example, there's average cloud revenue for a cloud server, which being enabled by an IPv4 address is about $300 per month, an average cloud server cost. And uh, the value of IPv4 because look at it, it's 0.3 per month per IP to lease it, right? And it's $300 per month to lease a cloud server, which its entire existence online is enabled by that single IPv4. It's only 0.1% of the service it supports. That is minuscule. And if you think about this concept for a moment, a relatively easy example in our real life about service enabler is actually the rent. A rent in any of the locations worldwide in city center from Manhattan to Hong Kong to Chicago to anywhere. The cost of a rent of any shop there is probably about 30% of their revenue. Why the rent contributes a significant portion of their revenue? Because the rent is a service enabler allows those shop deliver service to their customer. By that logic, the IPv4 has a huge potential. But even at today's undervalued states, the IPv4 is already representing some of the most significant portion of the telecom's market capitalization. So we calculated in an NIS website where it's ranging somewhere between 5% to 80%. And in case of Cogen, who a tier one telecom owns about 38 million IPs, that IP is worth somewhere around $2 billion today. And the total market cap for Cogen is $2.6 billion last time I checked. So which means if the IP address was be able to appreciate even slightly, let's say 100%, the value of IPv4 will exceeding the market capitalization of some public telecoms. As we discussed in a previous slide, it's a service enabler and uh, it's massively undervalued. So 100% increase is, is minuscule, but even just that represents a significant increase in the market capitalization of any telecoms. And why people is undervalued? It's because how the current system of distributing and managing IPv4 being organized. So all the IPv4 is basically provided by what so-called regional internet registries. They run registration database. And what owning IPv4 actually means is you have a right to registration in your database, in a database which II operates. So regional internet registry is a community-based bottom-up organization. There are five of them. And the current policy of regional internet registry lack of ownership recognition and a transfer requires a holding period which means that a liquid market could not be possible if every time you transfer an IPv4 and you have to hold it for a number of years before you can actually resell it. And then the third and probably most importantly is a need test imposed by regional internet registry policies. So in a modern market, you would think that if you put a couple million dollars on the table, you would automatically mean that you need that asset. But with IR policies, they need to come to tell you to check your house, to check your network, and decide if you need it. They need to decide if you're eligible even to spend the million dollars you already put on the table. That process is bureaucratic. It took a long time to complete and just like any bureaucratic process, it's receptive to corruptions, potential corruptions. But why this policy was like this, right? The regional internet registry are member-based companies. As members are the cloud providers, telecoms, 
and the ISP is here. Everybody is IPv4 owners. Everybody have IPv4 in their network. Why don't they want to own the very fundamental piece of their business? Why don't they want the appreciation in value of their fundamental asset? Why? The reason being, most of the members of regional internet registry have never really aware the existence of the regional internet registry despite being the vital part of their business. The executives of the company, the board of the company, never even heard about what is regional internet registry. They never cared where the IP came from. The job was leave to a log engineer somewhere down the train who would join the party in the mailing list and have no actual interest in the finance and operation of their company they work for. Instead, they basically join a club. It's very much like uh, have your gardener or housekeeper join your house association and vote to decide your house doesn't belong to you but actually belong to the house association. And the house association can decide to sell your house at any time you not obey the policy made by the house association. Why? Because the gardener never had a share in your company in the first place. And they get together and they make a policy. They have friends, circle of friends. They can jump around their friends' companies. And they have zero interest for the actual shareholder interest of the ISPs, telecoms, and cloud providers. And those policies set by the techie, the ISOs gardeners, in the interest to make this house association artificially super powerful. Those power exceeded to be even reasonable as a small private company which located in five continents. The regional internet registry at its core are just a small private companies. They are not some super government. But at this point, by the policy of regional internet registries, they can take away IP addresses from some of the largest telecom on the planet Earth. They can destroy an entire nation's internet access by simply altering the registration in their database. It's all possible in their bylaws. That is not right. And those policies not threaten the security of the existence of all the participants on the internet community, but also suppress greatly the value of IPv4 and stop the correct value recognition of the IP addresses. So what we can do to solve the problem? It's simple. The mechanism is there. The regional internet registry are made on the community-based policy framework, which means it's bottom up. And the telecoms, the ISPs, the cloud providers are the communities. We just need those CEOs, the executives, the board members to engage in the discussion. The leaderships of all the members of the regional internet registry need to take back control of their votes, their voice in the regional internet registries, join the discussions. And those decision makers of the company who are works closely or themselves being the interest of the company should take decisions what they want as owner of those IPv4s. Do they want house association decide the fate of their own house? Do they want their house value be artificially suppressed? Do they want to unleash the true value of their business? And those questions need to be answered by the executives of ISPs, telecoms, and cloud providers. And once we get the actual decision maker into the game and start to participate in the changing policies and vote the board member into regional internet registry, we will have a true opportunity to create market liquidity and awareness for IPv4 addresses. So the reason for the past 30 years, the telecom, the infrastructure sector has been greatly underappreciated in the collective big pie of the internet is because lack of scarcity. The scarcity creates market and create value. We never had real scarcity in our business. We have unlimited bandwidth. We have one after another data centers, submarine cables. We have everything. But the thing is that the low market liquidity created by this artificial policy 
Now, if we change that, if we allow the market being function normally, then the scarcity of IPv4 will be unleashed. And just like any product asset, the scarcity is the key to any business success. If something unlimited, there's no business to be made in the first place. And here we made a chart here, which is simple. If IPv4 reaches 30% of its surface value, the total market value of IPv4 could be increased 300 times. It could potentially generate $60 trillion for ISP and cloud provider globally in the market cap. That is the biggest ever wealth generation in this industry. Nothing come close to this, not even at the slightest. And this is possible. If a rent in Manhattan could cost 30% of the shop's revenue, a service enabler such as IPv4 should cost 30% of its services delivers to. And what's next? I truly hope today my presentation, and if you watch this video online, share it with your CEOs, share it with your board of directors, share it with the decision makers who actually make decisions for the company who own those IPv4s. Ask them to actively participate in regional internet registry policy discussions. Advocate for more flexible policies to recognize ownership. Push for a liquid functional market without artificial suppression of the value. Get rid of the need test. If you have money, you can buy IPv4, you can sell it anytime. It's yours to sell, it's yours to own. It's an asset. If we can put future market on food, we absolutely can put a future market with IPv4s and engage a wider audience with financial potentials with IPv4. We want investment funds. We want uh, even retirement funds coming to it. Treat IPv4 as a real goal, the replacement. Instead of cryptocurrencies, which doesn't have underlying real value, IPv4 is really the perfect replacement for gold. It is enabled the internet today. It has a real value and it's virtual and it's basically enabled the function of the internet today. That's it. Thanks everyone for listening to me. Have a good one.